Hi everybody, and it's time to put the uh, drive side oil seal in. And if we just discuss um, <clears throat> what what's actually going to happen, the oil seal basically sits on like that with a tiny gap, so it doesn't um, actually touch the crankshaft. This is a Viton seal. As we know, the whole purpose of um, doing the scooter is to uh, put this on. So that fits nice on the edge of the crankshaft. I just need to uh, put the crankshaft away for the moment. And what we're doing now is <clears throat> we put a bit of oil again on this you don't have to smother it like I've just done but just put a bit of oil around the edge help lubricate it to go in and likewise just on the edge there and that's just got to be punched in inside there like so so um, I'm just going to go and get my punch because I can't push it in, it is, uh, it is quite tight and we need to put it in square anyway not in at an angle so that gives you an idea what it will look like but that will probably fall out anyway in fact it's pushing itself out now there you go just caught it in time so I'm just going to get my the punch I use for that and cut back in again right what I use is one of these which is um, used for cutting holes out in ceilings you put blades in here but it's perfect fits in a dream knocks them in dead square I was giving that a wipe because I don't want to uh, get any crap on this oil seal Just giving it a wipe again before putting on some more oil. Set. So we put that in place, roughly square, and put our punch tool on it. And then all we do is tap it. going in normally they're going a bit squarer than that this one seems to be going in at a bit of an angle when you hear the note change you know your level that's in apart from just a bit more on the front hear that that's lovely you don't want this sticking out it needs to be level and again I've got dirt on it so I just need to clean the uh, the oil seal and inside on there again bearings moving nice and freely that's in lovely absolutely lovely I never use any heat some people say to put the the oil seals in the freezer but I don't want to damage them you know everybody like I keep saying does it their own way um, this is the way I do it and it doesn't let me down or well, it hasn't done so far so there's no reason why it will this time so as we've seen in the previous video we've put the cush drive in which is nice and free 
we could for all intents and purposes now put the um the crankshaft in if we wanted to i don't know why i got that out it's not big enough is it oh it is that would have done it i didn't even i never even tried to use that so that's a standard punch but uh i think more or less we've done with the uh the banging and what have you with hammers and what have you at the moment so um, <clears throat> with the crankshaft what I tend to do is get the clutch or get a broken down clutch and some washers and pull it in I'll show you anyway but, uh, that's nice it's not damaged in any way Just making sure everything is uh, again spotless because uh, on the edge of this bearing is where our crankshaft will rest against so I'm just making sure that that bearing is nice and clean which it is sand a bit sort of <clears throat> obsessive with the cleanliness but you know it's especially when you're looking this pad here you're relying on a gap that's uh, like a thousandth of an inch or whatever to uh, to give you a seal so the petrol's not being drawn down when the uh, crankshaft's covering. But um, yeah, I'll, what I'll do is I'll start the crankshaft, I think. I've got nothing to lose. And, um, and then I'll find all the bits to pull it in with. I'll show you how I do that. You know, it's not something that is out and about every day of the week so I'll have to cut away but the crankshaft itself is uh, is going to be clean now there's my rag that's the wrong one inside here is nice and clean there we go I'm going to clean it all we've got our nut to pull the whole lot through as I said previously, never ever ever hit that side of the crank. You're okay knocking out this side because it's solid. You're moving the solid part and you're not bending the, the crank pin or the two webs apart. I'm just cleaning up the, uh, the crank shaft. I need to clean in between the webs which is what I'm doing now sorry that you can't see this but uh, it's just again it's just cleaning and, and wiping and we've got two stroke oil on our main bearing the big bearing there is oiled so the windows are clear Right, so I'm happy with that. So what I'm going to do is just start that off in the engine. So push it home slightly with your hands. That's it. And what we need to do as well is to make sure that this uh, con rod doesn't get caught when we're pulling it through. But so I'll cut away, get the tools together and the bits and bobs that I use. And then we'll, we'll uh, you can watch me pulling it in. There's no uh, magic to that at all. It's just taking your time and not going too mad. What I've got is a series of um, bearings, second hand ones and some washers. So just grab hold of the con rod and keep it straight and just tighten this up slowly. Then all we need to do is about halfway through that's actually going up if I undo that I'll show you that the uh, crankshaft is pulling in I just need something to hold the com rod in place Um, that 
Let's see. Can you find doing or not? So I've got a series of washer, a little bearing to give us a spacer, and that's about halfway home as it stands at the moment. So we need some more washers on. And our bearing. This is the only way, unless you've got a proper tool, which will pull the crankshaft in. Is the only way to pull a crankshaft in. Never, ever, ever hit it with a hammer. You're asking for trouble. Right, so we need to set that on, tighten up. coming in really nice and easy. I'm not really putting a lot of weight on it. That might actually be all the way in. So no. Just undo it again and have a look. That looks bloody good, very good. Crankshaft is free, nice and free to rotate. Oil seal's doing its job. So I'm quite happy with that. It's just slightly in, which is where it should be. I mean, I can actually uh, maybe go try it a bit more tighter than that. There's no, there's no big deal. I don't think it will go any tighter than what we've got it at the moment anyway. But um, we can try. And say there's no um, torque setting for this it's just it's in it's in so again we'll hold our con rod in place I don't think that's going to go any more than that Take all these bits away now. Put them back in my box. That's not even moved from where it was before. So what we need to do now is just put them away. We can't put the clutch on at the moment for the simple reason that we need the other half of the engine on. But if you think of it, we've got quite a lot done today. Crankshaft's in. So crankshaft's in. 
uh, all, all but giving it a wipe again that's not the one that's the clean one making sure there's no grit or no dirt again and I'll keep saying it and getting on my own nerves saying it but there is a reason for wiping all of this and what we can do now if we want to is get our cog which drives drives the auto lube mechanism and put that on should be near somewhere. There it is, I can't see it. I can't see it for looking. But again, if you remember, there is a chamfered end on this. You see that? not square like that side square chamfered bit to the crankshaft <laughs> So if we had our woodruff key in now, which we haven't got at the moment, you see how that drives when the crankshaft turns? They mesh in lovely. That would be our woodruff key in line. I'm not doing that at the moment because we're not putting the clutch in, but that nut will save that from going walkies. And we've got a, a new washer to go holding the, um, the clutch together. So um, <clears throat> we're, getting, we're starting to get somewhere building the engine now and um it's uh i suppose the next discussion is the gearbox so i'll cut away and i'll start a new video on the gearbox um oil seal that i foolishly took out without checking the other one but we all live and learn uh, another no-no with these engines is never hit this you're relying on that to be square on for your selection of your gears because that's basically your gears are turning and this moves in and out I can turn them around and see what I mean so um, that would be first gear that's um, on at the moment so that would be your rear wheel being driven in first gear and you go slightly in a bit and it should free so they're all free that would be neutral bit more in second bit more in third and a bit more in near your four gears it's quite a, a primitive setup and again there's nothing that I can see on there that's causing me any anxiety on that the uh, the drive shaft is in good nick the gears are in good nick I can take that apart when we come to build that and the only other job I want to do today if I spin the engine around again I will seem to be on the wrong side of the engine but we know our clutch is uh, our crankshaft is in we did that on the last video so let me just turn this around again and I just want to put the oil thrower in because I don't want to lose anything while I'm building this engine so if there's anything as you're building it you can put in then you know do it basically so we're going up here, I'll turn the engine a bit more around to you and take you up. The oil thrower slides in there and if you remember what we were saying, uh, or what I was saying I should say, um, the older ones used to have a, a spring loaded like riveted to the engine case, the kickstart side, uh, just a like a flap, a metal flap that acted as a spring so there's our oil thrower I'm just going to give that a clean again and I won't say it this time because you should have it in your head why I'm doing this somebody's breaking into somebody's car by the sound of it I 
Okay, take it away. We don't want it. I'm just trying to think how this actually goes in. I think it goes like that. In there. But that way round, that's it. And just level. Because you want the cush drive to spin round. That's in. It basically stops all the uh, gearbox oil from ending up at the clutch. Now kickstart, star. Can't put it on yet, but it goes in on the cush drive. I'm just cleaning it again. So it goes in like that, and then that's what kicks as you kick down on your kickstarter. That's what turns the engine over. you can see why that has to be so small now where I said to you the weak point of a PX engine is and we've got our crankshaft in nice and free I don't, I'm still undecided whether to you know put the, the barrel studs on or put the barrel in after I've built it I don't really have a preference it's uh, it's easier to get the engine in with nothing on it and um, put the hub on so uh, yeah I think I'll call this video a, a day now because you can see how that works the kickstart ratchet it's sprung loaded um, <clears throat> I don't know if I mentioned this before I might have done but the kickstart itself all these cogs need to be perfect as well no chips out of them nice and clean which I'm lucky enough they are on this engine so it's always a, a wonder when you take them apart as to what you'll find you, know, you never know what you're going to find in an engine or what's missing on an engine uh, what bodges have been in there before you um, I don't think many people have opened this engine before myself um, it's not done mega miles anyway but uh, I think it had something like 30,000 on it a whole bike a whole scooter I'm just cleaning out the cap but, uh, that's nice and clean keep cleaning and then you don't have to go too mad on it when you're putting it together that's pretty good let's say there was no iron filings in the the engine when you when you check it unlike every time you do a lambretta there's always metal filings everywhere it's the nature of the beast but uh, yeah as i say that's enough for today um i'm going to get the uh, rear hub run um this plate i'll get that cleaned off and um, rubbed down sprayed I don't think I actually sprayed that that looks factory from um, from original so I'll get that rubbed down wire brushed and uh, painted up and that can go on and our rear shoes can go on yeah it's a bit rough on the inside but not bad it's uh, not deformed so right thanks for watching and take care everybody and once again thanks for all the new subscribers hope you're getting something out of these series